Hello and welcome to It's All About You, the best show about you on the internet. I am B. Dave Walters, life strategist and spiritual coach. This is episode number 28, Beliefs. And I still didn't start my watch. Can you believe that? There we go. All right, the watch is going now. You know, this has been a weird thing. I've had to start this one like three or four times. Usually I just kind of punch these things out, but something here is holding me back. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm recording this late at night, and usually I record it in the daytime. So, I apologize. I'm trying my best here, okay? So we're talking about beliefs. Now, before I get started, I want to say uh, say something real fast. You may have noticed a note I put up on Facebook. I've started writing my third book uh, because my letter collection is basically my second book. Or my collection of articles, rather, is my second book. And I'm asking everybody to submit two pieces of information for me. Your birth date, time, and location. And what's your major personality style? Are you visual, auditory, kinesthetic, or auditory digital? If you don't know what that is, I got a note up on Facebook, on my fan page, and on my profile. Or message me if you're seeing this somewhere besides Facebook. I'll explain to you what they are. Send me a message or post it on the note. I appreciate it. If you give me the information, I mention you by name in the book, unless you want to be anonymous, and then I won't mention your name, but I'll just, you know, say who you did somebody help me. So thank you in advance. Now, for the first time in history, I want to start off with two quotes. The first one is, I do not feel obliged to believe that the same God who has endowed us with sense, reason, and intellect has intended us to forego their use. It's by Galileo Galilee. I do not feel obliged to believe that the same God who has endowed us with sense, reason, and intellect has intended us to forego their use. Galileo Galilee. The second one is, believe nothing, no matter where you read it or who said it, no matter if I have said it, unless it agrees with your own reason and your own common sense. This is by Buddha. Believe nothing, no matter where you read it or who said it, no matter if I've said it, unless it agrees with your own reason and your own common sense. That's by Buddha, okay? Now, originally when I sat down to record this episode, I was kind of going to give a quick overview of all the world's major religions. And working through it, it just kind of felt weird to try and give a, 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 a 30 second <laughs> encapsulation of what it means to be Jewish or Christian or Muslim. So it was kind of difficult. So maybe I'll do it on the next episode. I don't know. We'll do it eventually. Maybe each faith will get their whole own episode. I don't know. You tell me what you want. In fact, should I do an overview on religion? Should I skip religion? Actually, you know, I'm not going to skip religion. I'm just not. If we can't talk about adults, if by now, if by now you and I can't just talk, then what are we doing here? You know, I love you. I'm just talking. Okay. So beliefs. Because I believe you can handle it. <laughs> so much in life, you've probably heard me mention this before or seen it in any of the articles that I wrote on TheExaminer.com. By the way, I got picked up to be the national spirituality columnist for TheExaminer.com. Before now, my articles were only distributed regionally. I was only in Los Angeles. Now I'm nationwide. So people all over the country get to read my stuff. Isn't that cool? So thank you, by the way, because it's largely because of you and your support that I was able to do this. And so I appreciate that. Now, back to beliefs. Everything you are is a combination of a couple of different factors. Of your, you know, your genetics, you know, your race, height, weight. Your upbringing and conditioning, what you were taught to believe. Your personal experiences, things that have happened to you. And your beliefs, what you took all of those things to mean. Okay? And because of that, there's certain beliefs that are what we call limiting beliefs, that you can choose to accept them, but they don't really serve you. And not only do they not serve you, they're actually doing you harm. Like, I'll give you an example of a limiting belief. You tell me what comes to your mind when I say this. All rich people are bad. What goes through your mind? If when you hear that, you're all like, yeah, it's, you know, it's easier for a camel to pass through an eye of the needle or a rich man to go to heaven, right? Uh, that is bad. And I'll tell you why. If you have a belief that all rich people are bad, you will never be wealthy. Ever. Okay? Or at least, actually more likely, you will probably always struggle to make ends meet. And you will probably always struggle financially if for some reason you've chosen to adopt the belief that money is somehow bad. And... 
a lot of this is rooted in religious conditioning, unfortunately, because you hear things like money's the root of all evil, when in fact, actually, at least in the Christian Bible, it doesn't say that at all. It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. For you to put money on a pedestal and prize things above people and above your spiritual development, then yes, that leads to ruin, because that is why it is easier for a cam the camel to pass through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to go to heaven. That's a Another one of Jesus' sayings. It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go to heaven. Because, not that money in and of itself is somehow bad. Because the valuing of things and possessions over your fellow human beings in service to your fellow man in developing and knowing your creator is bad. Does that make sense? Or, here's another one. I'll say this, you tell me what you think. Women cannot be trusted. What about all men are dogs? You'd be surprised how often people think things like this. Now, if you have a belief, even if you're a man or a woman, that all women cannot be trusted, then it's going to be really hard for you to have a functioning relationship with a woman, be it a romantic relationship or even a friendly relationship. If you believe that in the end, in her core, she is untrustworthy, then how can you ever really be open and honest and share with her and have a, an, an intimate relationship? And I don't even necessarily mean sexually. I just mean intimately. You can't. So... If you believe this about men, same thing, that all men are dogs, that all men are philanderers, that all men cheat, that all men are bad, that all men lie, then you can't really be surprised when you keep getting yourself into situations and manifesting circumstances where men cheat on you. Because here's the thing. You know I'm a big fan of the law of, the tr uh, law of attraction. Talk about it all the time, write it all the time, do my best to live it. The law of attraction is always working. I did two episodes on the Law of Attraction already, in fact. The Law of Attraction is always working. I mean, people often tell me, well, how do I do it? How do I make it work? I'm like, oh, it's already working. The question is, are you working? Because it's bringing to you stuff right now. So if you have these beliefs programmed into the supercomputer that's in between your ears, then that is what it's going to bring to you. You follow me? Because... Even I don't even have to get into like the higher mystical aspects of the law of attraction. If you just look at it from the fact that your brain has something in it, you may have heard me mention this, called a reticular activator. What a reticular activator does is help you search out meaningful patterns. Like if you've ever been walking by a newsstand and you just see one word that'll be like a Obama, whether you love him or hate him, you might just see Obama. And then you turn and you're like, wait, what was that? What was it? And then you look in on it and it's probably either going to say something good about him if you like him or something bad about him if you don't like him or vice versa. Whatever it triggers your brain is important. Your reticular activator is why when you get a new pair of shoes, suddenly you see that pair of shoes everywhere. Why when you get a new car, you see that car driving around everywhere. Now, the reticular activator is actually a mixed thing because I hear quite often, I've had a few times and it was always women, even though I love you, who said things like, well, I'm using the law of attraction to, to get this man to love me, and I keep seeing signs, I keep seeing his name places, I keep seeing guys that look like him, and so these are signs from the universe that he and I are supposed to be together. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Or it could just be your particular activator is functioning, and you've decided that this is a priority, and so it points out things that remind you of this man. Right? So... What I'm saying is, your beliefs and what you are looking for will affect what it is that your brain sees. Everybody, every time information comes in, everybody goes through a process of distorting, deleting, and generalizing. Okay? For the most part, unless you're like a well-trained Tibetan monk, nobody really sees reality like it is. Nobody sees reality what it is. Okay? Like, I can't guarantee you that you're seeing the same color pattern on this shirt that I am. I don't know that you see the same color on my skin that I see. But you and I have both agreed that when I mention this shirt or my skin that what I think it is and what you think it is, we're kind of just agree that that's what it is, right? Because that's what we believe it is. And so, it is. But if you believe I'm going to die alone, 
then you're not really creating the space for the universe to send you a different situation. You follow me? Your mind won't see it. If you believe that money is bad, then literally a million dollar idea could fall from the sky right in front of you and you will not see it. Your brain will not allow you to process it. Does that make sense? But I'm going to go ahead and split this for my brothers and sisters on YouTube. You guys make sure to watch part two. Everybody else, stay with me here.